Hey, welcome back to the channel. This is your host Ben on the Lover of Tech channel. And today it's cold on a winter's day in the UK, but with the deceptive look of summer. And I wanted to give you a different outlook today. I was privileged enough to have the Galaxy Note 8 since the announcement on the 23rd of August, and I've been using it since then. I wanted to give you my final verdict to see if it's worth your money in 2017, where there's been so many phone releases. So without further ado, roll the intro. So I'm gonna wrap this up nicely and give you my overall take on whether this phone is worth your hard earned money or not. Now, quick disclaimer, I have made a video about why smartphones are expensive this time around and the reasons behind it and whether they're worth their price or not. So I'm gonna link it in the cards above. So watch that video if you haven't. And also my other Note 8 videos on day one of announcement and my comparison to the S8 Plus, if you've not watched it again, I'm gonna link it in the cards. Give these videos a watch, come back and watch this video because I'm just gonna deep dive and just give you a quick overview of why I think this is probably one of the best phones to have this year and why it's probably worth having over the competition. So the first thing I'm going to tackle is the camera. The camera is the thing that everyone asks me about when it comes to this phone and I did a camera comparison against the iPhone 8 Plus and both held up well within their own right for their strengths and weaknesses but definitely I was leaning towards the more overall experience on the Galaxy Note 8 with the dual 12 megapixel, dual optical image stabilization. This is absolutely clutch. This is the first camera to do with dual optical image stabilization and it's a game changer in terms of the versatility. The pictures that you're able to get with this phone are absolutely phenomenal. It's well balanced and very vibrant. In a lot of cases, it really seems to get the job done. The OIS is absolutely really, really good. It does lack certain things in terms of the video shooting frame rates of higher levels, but nonetheless, it's very doable in terms of what it does in terms of 4K and 1080p video recording. This is definitely really held up really well. And that's been the camera experience that I've really enjoyed. The versatility you get with the tele-zoom lens with dual optical image stabilization, as well as live focus, it has absolutely been something I've enjoyed over anything like the Galaxy S8 and the S8 Plus. So I think even just for that reason alone, if you are into your photography, that might be something you want to consider that this might be worth getting. Now next is the display. It's not something I really had that much questions around but it is very similar to what you're going to get on the S8 Plus. It is ever so slightly brighter but you're only going to notice that when you have it side by side especially when it's in automatic mode with certain conditions where it really cranks up the brightness but overall the display experience has been very similar. It is ever so slightly better but it is something that is going to be a good experience and Samsung have pretty much nailed it this year and have solidified the fact that they pretty much do make the best mobile displays on the market with all the other controversies that have been going on with all the other products such as the Google Pixel 2 XL Samsung have pretty much stamped the 2007 seal of approval for mobile displays and the Galaxy Note 8 definitely doesn't disappoint so that's one experience I'll definitely say it's been phenomenal another thing I get asked about is the extra two gigabytes of RAM having six gig doesn't really really make a difference and I'm gonna cut straight to the chase and say yes Yes, it does. The day-to-day -day experience, especially when it comes to RAM management, is absolutely the boss. And I think if you guys are watching this, you've seen enough speed tests. When it comes to RAM management specifically, the Note 8 is boss. It's pretty much on the same level as all the other phones, such as the OnePlus 5, where they've got such high RAM count. And I think this is a new leaf because I can confidently say this is probably going to be the first phone outright where it won't suffer from any performance over time degradation because it seems like the performance is really held up well and that's something I've been really enjoying and the day-to-day -day difference as the fact that I use the S8 Plus in conjunction with the Galaxy Note 8 it's definitely seen a performance difference with that extra two gigabytes of RAM and being able to optimize it. The next thing I was asked is the reduction in battery life against the S8 Plus has it been a problem on here and funny enough it hasn't it seems like they've also optimized it really well but me saying that Optimization is only gonna get you so far. This is not groundbreaking. I think the only phone that I think Samsung really did battery great on it in terms of capacity and also optimization was definitely the S7 Edge. With that 3,600 milliamp hour battery, this having 3,300 milliamp hours, it's just been okay, it's been good. And I've said this before that I'm an overpower user. So no phone really gets me through a whole day of usage, but most of the time I 
tend to get the screen on time usage out of the phones that I have right now. And this was giving me about four to five hours of screen on time and it's really, really good. And yeah, it's been okay. It's not been groundbreaking, but it's not bad in terms of what happened with the reduction. It seems like they've optimized it again. And last is the S Pen. The S Pen, I'm probably part of few people that use the S Pen on a regular basis. I find it clutch. With my day-to-day -day job, I tend to use a lot of documents on a go and I tend to sign a lot of documents on a go. So having that extra versatility and precision control with the S Pen is really, really good to actually get me in my workflow as well as my natural day-to-day -day use. And there's times where I just wanna have extra position with the pen. My fingers get tired of all the writing and all the typing that I have to do throughout the day. So sometimes it's really refreshing just to click open the S Pen, use it with the screen, and then just have that freedom of just having that extra extension, which feels really, really comfortable, whether it's things like screen off memo. I don't tend to use live message that much, but just through different navigations and also things like screen write, there's other little things and touches that I like about using the S Pen that feel really comfortable. And I've been a Note user since the Galaxy Note 2, so I've really appreciated how well it's been refined ever since it's been released, and it's no exception here. Overall, my experience with the Galaxy Note minus the price which I do question at 869 in the UK and pretty much a thousand dollars after taxes in America is it really worth that price I think it's questionable why phones have become this price but if there is any particular phone that might actually consider coming close to this price point this is the kitchen sink phone probably next to the LG V30 in 2017, but with the addition of the S Pen, I would say that this might be closer to that £1,000, $1,000 price point that you might worth having to consider on a smartphone. But hey, price aside, I think over the S8 Plus and the S8, if size isn't much of a factor, this might be something that you might want to consider with the Galaxy Note 8. Anyway, that's my final verdict on the Galaxy Note 8. Definitely a champion flagship phone for this year in terms of speed tests and all the other things that has been put through. So without a shadow of a doubt, do consider this to be one of the phones for 2017 amongst a great competition. It really depends on what you value and what you want from your phone. But if you want everything, which is the kitchen sink phone, which is what I'm calling the Galaxy Note 8, do consider this phone as one of the phones for 2017. Hope you liked it. Hit me up in the comments. Let's have a discussion in the comment section below. If there's any particular thing that you want to see next time, give me a shout and I'd be more than happy to accommodate it. Make sure to follow my social media presence on Twitter where I'm very active on, as well as Snapchat, Instagram, and Facebook. Make sure to subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you're part of the notification squad so you can see all the latest content that is posted on the Lover of Tech channel. Again, I'm your host, Ben, signing out, and I will see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.